basically I don't know what to say at this point, especially considering how things are with the community. I'm going to start out by saying this. You pop in with your input, interrupt me whenever you do have something to say. Basically, I want to clarify something. As a Christian, I don't really believe any of it is right, but I'm going to put that aside for now because we're trying to look at this from an objective standpoint. First off, the LGBTQ plus community. It stands for? Uh, lesbian, gay, LGBT, trans, and queer, and other stuff. The B, you missed, but... Oh, bye. Yeah, you're fine. The first three are forms of sexuality. The rest of it is just any concept related to gender fluidity or changing genders, changing the gender you were born with, anything along those lines. It, it could literally be anything at this point, considering how many pronouns, but that's for me to expand on later in the video. I want to make it clear that the LGB has nothing to do with the TQ+, and they should honestly be their own communities. I've watched a few videos myself, and I'll put the links in the description for this, where they mentioned that they are not the same and therefore they should not be part of the same. And the irony is one guy is gay, the other guy is straight. Before I get into the trans community and the rest of the pronouns who want to choose literally whatever they want, before I get into all that, I want to make a distinction between sexuality and love. Let me know if you have something to say on this. Gay, bisexual, lesbian, sorry. It's hard for me to find out the word. The first and the third, they are pretty much the same kind of sexuality. The original term is homosexuality. It's not the same as love. Everyone's attracted to different things. Uh, I'm attracted to music. You are attracted to what kind of music? Many. I don't know how many. It's just music. I like just understanding music. Even if it's something I don't um, listen to regularly. Same can be said for sexuality. You are attracted to men. That's just a pure born fact for you. You're attracted to women as a woman. Pure born fact. Bisexual, you're attracted to either one sexually. That's a pure born fact for you. But I cannot say that that's a form of love because sexual attraction, it's about the bonus sides of what it means to romantically love someone. I'll say this, if you've already decided and accepted with your mind, heart, and body that you will forever be sexually attracted to whoever you are sexually attracted to and you won't accept anyone saying anything against that, you might not want to watch this next part of the video because this is only for those who have doubts still about coming out. For anyone who's ever felt like who's still in that stage of feeling like there's something wrong with them for being sexually attracted to anyone but the opposite sex. I want to say that you might want to look into the possibility of having some sort of sexual trauma t uh, towards you or your parents saying something that made you think that you should do certain things from a young age that have nothing to do with your gender binaries and there's nothing wrong with stepping outside of those binaries a little bit. I mean, the both of us are quite feminine in a few ways in the fact that we like peace and quiet more than being rowdy. There are just things that make us more feminine than most guys that show that you don't have to be what makes you the gender you are completely. Back I like gender roles. Yeah. What was I saying earlier, before I brought up gender? Um, you were talking about how love and sexual orientation are different. Oh yeah, I was saying that guys or girls who are sexually attracted to anyone but the heterosexual normative, I would say to any of you who are still lost or still feel like there is something wrong, I would say good on you, first off. Second, I was saying that you might want to check in on the idea of being sexually confused from a young age and your automatic response from that was becoming sexually attracted to a gender that is to the same gender as yours or just being attracted to either one. So here's an example. Here's two examples actually. 
One is just a general narrative. The other is going to be something that I actually heard my mother talk about. First, the guy who became homosexual probably had a lot of love, affection, and attention from his mother, but near to nothing from his father. In fact, it might have been quite, quite bad as far as how the father treated this boy. They're sexually attracted to other guys who seem to have more of a healthy masculine appeal, and they're sexually attracted to them because they're confusing that with their need for a father that did their job right. On top of this, any boy or man who experienced this also has a big, big relationship with their mother and learned how to be more like a, almost a little too feminine. They adopt a somewhat female-oriented mindset about who they are. That doesn't mean they're a completely fake person, but it just means that they aren't complete. In summary, this boy became homosexual because their father did not do their job right in, in being a masculine leader for them to emulate into their life. And when they're sexually attracted to other guys, they think that is going to help give them that, when really it won't. Now that I've gotten that narrative out of the way, let's talk about something else. My mother told me about this boy that she worked with. She's a music teacher. Actually, I don't know if she worked with him, but it was either that or it was a story that she read online. This boy basically uh, wanted to start wearing dresses. They noticed he wanted to start doing that, but the reason why was because having a sister, a newborn sister, at newborn baby age meant they had to give less attention to him and far more to her. And because he knew that it was a sister, he felt that putting on this stuff would help him get love and attention from his parents. And once the therapist that he was going to helped the parents realize that, they tried to work on that and help him realize every day that, that he was to not be ignored and that he was to be loved with all their hearts. I'll put a link to where, I get, where I'm getting this information down below. But basically, as far as girls go, girls have to have love from both of their parents in order to not fall down this hole. And if even one of them does that, the same might happen, whether it's homosexuality or bisexuality. Transgender and pronouns and he, him, they, them, whatever. You chose what you chose, and for the most part, if you leave it at that, nothing is complicated about the process. But many people, I've realized, are trying to become so gender fluid, and people are, have become so fearful of not adhering to the expectations of everyone in that part of the community that, that stuff like this happened. I saw a video once of a woman and a guy. The woman was saying it is a concrete fact that women are the only people who can get pregnant. The guy that she was talking to when she was saying like, that is a pure blood fact, whether you like it or not. And the guy was literally saying, I disagree. Now with their teacher, they can't even tell them that a, a woman is the one that gets pregnant. I know, I know. What does it I, depend on? I know trans men that can get pregnant. That, that means it's a woman. Only one sex can well, get that's pregnant. That's a circular argument. That's it's not a circular the argument. Yeah. It's proving my thing. There is a truth, a concrete truth. You have to be born with a uterus to have a baby. Only women can get pregnant. The fact that we've arrived in a society right, that's even the part I'm debatable. disagreeing with. This is a grown man disagreeing with the statement that only women can get pregnant. This is a grown... Let me repeat this. This is a grown man who disagrees, who is on camera, who is being seen on camera saying that he disagrees with the fact that only women can get pregnant. He cut that because it is literally a ridiculous notion that anyone can get pregnant. Pregnant people, no, it is literally just pregnant women. That's how problematic it's starting to become. I just don't think that it's healthy. There's also the fact that a lot of women who want to repel men, who are literally trying to, so incredibly hard to go the opposite direction of standards for women in the world that they're trying to take men out of the picture for them but they're putting them back into the picture by doing everything in their power to repel them
the attempt to move away from the male gaze, which in feminist theory is when males tend to objectify women, and so it's oppressive. So these women want to move away from that and change their style so that it's not what men typically find attractive. Ladies, I'm gonna show you exactly how to repel men with makeup. If you're looking for outfits to repel men, you've stumbled on the right video. We're gonna start off with a pair of black trousers with quite a low crotch area. This is just to let them know that we do in fact have bigger balls than they do. I hope you repel many men today. But I do find this funny because the point that they're trying to make is that we should dress for ourselves, right? Wear what you like, wear what makes you comfortable, what makes you happy, and not think about men. Yet the focus here is on men. There are women, of course, who will wear, you know, six inch heels that they're not comfortable in, they don't really want to wear, but they're doing it for men, right? To appease the male gaze, or they do something specific with their hair or makeup or whatever, not for themselves, but for men. In this case, you have girls and young women, you know, getting body modifications or tattoos or piercings or doing something specific with their hair, tends to be dyeing it pink or blue or purple, um, or shaving it all off, just because that's what they're told will repel men. You're doing your part as a modern day feminist. So they're still failing to dress for themselves and the focus is still on men. They're worrying about whether or not some man will like it. They are opting for more of an androgynous look. And there is of course the body hair movement, which listen, I don't think it's a big deal. If you don't wanna shave, don't shave. If you wanna shave, shave. But they think that it's brave and empowering to show off their body hair, you know, their armpits or their legs and they'll post it anywhere but on their head, of course. Call it a little quirk, if you will. I have hair in my armpit. I have it there for a few reasons. One, lazy. Two, the patriarchy. And three, your response to them tells me everything I need to know. And then they get applauded for it. They even expect likes and comments from all these other girls, you know, saying that they are stunning and brave for having body hair, for not shaving. But then they also get really upset when men don't want to date them because they may have a preference. But if they have that preference, then that's misogynistic, of course. Which is silly. Women have preferences too. Some women don't like men with beards, for example. That's fine. But when men have preferences with body hair or facial hair or whatever, that's a problem. If you just stopped caring at all, you wouldn't feel any need to do that and you would just be the woman that you wanted to be. And then another thing, the endless pronouns and just the fact that pansexual exists instead of bisexual, the they them pronouns, it's, it's becoming ridiculous. I'm not sorry to say that because it's starting to get out of hand. And I even, another video that the same video in the description incorporated was this guy trying to preach the word of God. He was doing that on top of a small step ladder. One of the people at Pride literally held a clown mask in front of his face. And then another, I don't even know what gender this person was. They decided to hold a rainbow fan up in his face as well. And just like open, close it, open, close it to distract him. Because they had the same mindset as a child. That's why it makes sense actually. Okay, there's so many questions here. We got Spider Man. <laughs> we got Spider Man right here with red with a red mohawk. Is that a woman or a man? Don't even ask me. I don't even know. Probably a they. Multiple people on the screen. You know what? Let me just continue the clip because there's just too many questions. Spider Man with a mohawk is insane. I don't even know what to say. The only son that whoever believes in Jesus would not <laughs> Let's just break down what's going on here. So, we've got this evangelist trying to preach the word of God. Then we have this seems to be a woman. Don't, don't quote me because you know these people. Looks like a woman, a fat lady with her face painted white. With a rainbow fan. Where do you even purchase that? People are so hung up on this nonsense that pretty much they seem to be dominating the public opinion and ostracizing people like me who don't believe that it's right. I don't know why they're doing it. It's, I can safely say that it's not good. I can safely say that it's getting out of hand. And I can also safely say that even those who are a part of the normal LGB community at this point because I'm trying to make such separation between the gender fluidity stuff and the sexual orientations. Even many of them feel that it's getting out of hand. In fact, like I said, one video involves a gay guy speaking about all this. The other is straight. So if both can agree on this, then it's probably true. 
And there's also the fact that a lot of the pride nonsense is being incorporated into kids shows. Blue's Clues has something called, I don't even know if it's Disney World, Disneyland or Blue's Clues, but there's something called Gay Day being incorporated. When it comes to sexuality, leave these kids alone. This extends to even kids shows. Trans members of this family all love each other so proudly and they all go marching in the big parade. Come join the fun. All of this LGBTQ marketing towards children just needs to stop. What are you doing on Blue's Clues? Why is there dolphins with um with cut marks as if the dolphins transitioned? Why are there pansexual beavers? Like, wh what? Kids are being brought to drag performances where weird men are basically dressing up in drag and performing sexual dances for them, even if they're not showing any, even if they're not flashing anything for them. My next concern, why are drag queens so hell bent on performing in front of children? I'm dumbfounded at the link between that people try to make between a drag queen and a kid. Why do drag queens feel the need to read to children? I even saw a drag artist showing the kids how to twerk. Why are you teaching them how to twerk? And you, you crouch down into this sort of position here, so your thumb sticking out. Don't be taking this all in. <laughs> and then you just move your thumb up and down like that. And that's twerking. They were also trying to get the kids involved, trying to dance in the same way that the drag people did. Why are you having children perform? <laughs> Genuine question, why? I do not get it. I do not condone it. I think it just all needs to be gone. And again, leave the children alone. It's really out of hand, and I could not agree more with these two guys that I'm linking in the description about how it's getting out of hand. Okay, there were a few other things I wanted to discuss that I forgot to include in the video. First off, this whole transgender thing. I've already discussed the sexualities. I've already discussed the uh, gender fluid no, stuff. Let's just say this. Transgender is literally when you want to transfer from your natural born gender to the other. And there's no other way to do it. Saying that to anyone who identifies as they or them, or anyone who wants to be gender fluid. But the motive behind why people would do that is different for everyone. And I specifically wanted to talk about gender dysphoria and the business behind surgeries for those who want to make such transitions. First off, gender dysphoria that I could understand why, because it is you literally having the condition of feeling like you are in the wrong body. But the problem with becoming transgender because of that is the fact that you're giving into something that's natural, yes, for you, but it's also putting you at a disadvantage because it's irreversible for the most part. Coming back to your gender is irreversible for the most part, and I'm going to talk about that in a moment with the surgeries, but to elaborate, it's kind of like me with my autism and ADHD. They are mental disabilities, and I'm not saying gender dysphoria is a mental disability, but it is a psychological diagnosis that you can get, and it actually be an accurate, an actual condition in existence. If I were to, with my conditions, let my brain do its own thing, I would have perished. Let's explain why. My autism, it's a sensory processing disorder, so it basically means I have to process literally every single bit around me, and I get overwhelmed and mentally clouded easily because, well, just mentally overstimulated because everything around me is really, really, really tough to take in. If I were off my medication, it would be very hard for me to do anything except feel like that all day. That's what autism is. And then my ADHD, it, it gives me the same feeling, but with a slight twist to it. Instead of feeling so overwhelmed that I don't know how to deal with the world around me, my ADHD makes me go like, 
who cares? Screw this. I'm going forward and I'm giving and acting on impulse. ADHD is basically a condition for being so scatterbrained that your moods change almost every single hour of the day without your medication. Your ability to control your tongue is incredibly more difficult than without medication. Or at least I'm saying all this from my experience that medication isn't for everyone. And just prioritizing what I need to do versus what I want to do is extremely, so incredibly difficult. And I have a pill that I take in the morning, which I just took today. I'm really, 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 really good at taking my medication. That allows my brain to be clouded and disrupt my natural mental rhythm. It allows me to pick and choose what I focus on since I get overstimulated and impulsivity becomes less problematic and I'm not so overwhelmed and physically and mentally tense that I want to punch someone. All those symptoms leave when I take my meds for the day. And it never begins in the first place because I take it in the morning. And then comes my autism. I take an antipsychotic by the name of Zoprazidone. I've heard it termed as a generic form of Geodon. I don't even know what that is. Basically, it's a sedative that I take in the evening that allows me to not only sleep so incredibly deeply that I take 30 minutes just to wake my eyes up. <laughs> but I also take it in the evening so that it can help me sleep a little better because sleep is one thing that I cannot do very well whatsoever without my medication. And then also have some of that mood stabilizing effects left over for the first part of the day so that I just feel relatively balanced once I wake up in between the time I actually wake up and the time I take my meds. And I've experienced the difference between taking medication and not medication for this and I can safely say that it's something I need in order to function properly and live a healthy happy life with my conditions. But I also have noticed that social skills, having built that up my sleeve, has helped me to combat the social and communication disadvantage that autism provides. The ADHD, that always helped me to get out into the world, but it never helped me to get it, to get myself out there in the right way. So now that you've heard all that, that's pretty much what you should be doing with your gender dysphoria, doing whatever you need to to fight against it, because you know that it is not going to help you. And in fact, if you decide to give in to the impulse of going into a different gender with surgery, and this leads me, me into my next point, there might be irreversible damage if you try to do stuff like that. There was a video I watched, another video, yes, I'm linking that in the description as well, of a woman who decided to take on the challenge of transitioning, but honestly, her insecurities and this is where you really, 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 really gotta be careful not to confuse any subconscious feelings with feeling like you are in the wrong body. She confused gender dysphoria with her insecurities about being one fat, out there, loud and proud tomboy woman. If, if you question this at all, you get labeled really quickly, correct? You do, immediately as transphobic. Why do you think that is? I think that a lot of the transgender community, they're so, they push so much for acceptance that when you immediately, like, or anytime you start to, like, question them, even if it's, like, out of the kind of goodness of your heart to try and make sure that they're making the right decision, anything that goes against their narrative is just immediately labeled as transphobic. Now, after you started to transition, uh, how else did you begin to change your life to live as a man? I had changed my name. I started wearing a binder. Um, I even moved cities because at the time I was very um, hesitant to actually come out to like coworkers. So I moved about four hours away. I got a completely different job and introduced myself as a trans man. Okay. And what happened when you began to schedule time to get a double mastectomy? I haven't had any uh, top surgeries, but I did get approved for it. Um, okay, and that's how, what it is. You got approved for I it. I did. I got approved. And how that worked, it was scarily easy to do because I had just called a therapist um, and I had scheduled one appointment, one, for like a 30-minute session to talk about. And I essentially walked in. 
I said, I identify as transgender and I want to get top surgery. And we chatted for a bit, maybe for half an hour. And at the end of the session, she wrote me an approval letter to send to my insurance. And then I got approved just like that. When, when you first started, you went in, you said to Planned Parenthood. Yes. And they gave you testosterone mm -hmm. immediately. Yeah, I essentially just made a phone call and said, I want, I want to transition. And it was immediately given. I got a prescription and went to pick it up like a week later. Did they ask you questions? Did they do any psychological testing? Did they ask you why? What nope. was your motive? It was your... completely self-diagnosed. Well, self-diagnosed. I claimed that I had gender dysphoria and I wanted to transition, and they didn't really ask me any questions about it. I just called them and I said, "When can I? When can I get this?" And they just said they needed to write me a prescription for it and send it. And that's essentially you, you had no proof that you were I never gender saw dysphoria. About you, it. you didn't. Yeah, I didn't talk to anyone about it, nobody medically professionally. I had just looked up, I did some like trans research, I guess, into the transgender community and everybody online, and they just seemed so happy and successful. And at the time, I didn't see any information on detransition or any like the negatives about it. And so I kind of got completely wrapped into that. You said, I want testosterone, they gave it to you. Yeah, I had confused, because um, I, I had become uncomfortable with how society had seen me as a woman sexually. And I had confused that, being uncomfortable with my gender as gender dysphoria and being uncomfortable with my body. So I didn't actually have gender dysphoria. I had just confused myself into thinking that I did. She went on to also say that, and I believe her on this, because goodness knows this world is messed up. The industry is trying to prey off of those who might even have the slightest feeling that they are gender dysphoric and just be like, yep, you are definitely that. Let's get you on it right away without actually asking any subliminal questions that have to do with figuring out those subconscious beliefs or feelings. And they don't care about you or the irreversible damage that you might have to deal with later on because they just want to make money off of you because they know that these surgeries are expensive and they are really big fat changes that can affect you for the rest of your life. My point being as a Christian, don't do it. If you have ever had any Christian experience and you've also dealt with any of these things I've talked about in here, I have to say just don't do it. I'm sorry, but just don't do it. Hold on to any bit of Christian belief you have left because whatever you do have, trust me when I say that not only for this life, but the afterlife, you're going to be saved like that if you do everything you can to fight against any of these tendencies I've talked about in this video. So, in summary, the pronouns and gender fluid community, uh, it's getting a little too much, not just because of how many endless genders there are when the concrete fact is man and woman, but also people are starting to say pregnant people instead of pregnant women when that issue was brought up in like two example videos of the of two of the videos I'm linking down below. So it needs to stop because of things like that. Two, sexuality does not equal love, regardless of how you became sexually attracted to whatever it is, you need to resist that urge like it's the worst thing you could ever do in your life and it probably is because of STDs and stuff like that could happen if you have sex with anyone, if you have sex with many people like It's also one of the leading causes for people in the LGB community, not even the TGQ+, having really high anxiety rates and suicidal rates. So don't confuse the two and don't give in to any impulses as much as you possibly can to have sex with whoever, unless you're married to the opposite sex, that's, that's fine. Three, make sure you're not confusing any subliminal subconscious thoughts of gender insecurities with gender dysphoria and just don't do it in general because by literal order of God it is not the right thing to do. So thank you for watching this video. Sorry if it took a really long time and I hope you can bear with me in me expressing my opinion as I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this. Uh, I might just turn, actually yes I'm turning the comments off because I just don't uh, thumbs up versus thumbs down ratio, I can deal with that. But anything else, like, mm, I'm sorry, but I I'm not doing this. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. 
now you know my perspective you do with it what you will thank you so much for being patient with me if you did try to hear me out and you're not cringing so much that you want to run the other way if you are one of those people even if it's a very slim chance make sure to subscribe down below with the notifications bell on for more controversial topics like this um i don't do them regularly at all so it might be a while before the next but make sure to comment down below in my previous video since the comments for this one is going to be turned off what else you want me to talk about anyways thank you so much for watching this video i will see you all next time goodbye